Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Today we're working on Module 4, Lesson 6, and this involves using different protractors to measure angles. Now, I'm going to give a little preamble to tonight's homework, which is to say, this is a little difficult because you guys will be having your paper book, and you'll have your physical protractor, and you'll be putting your protractor on top of your book to figure out some angles. I have just a screen, and that screen has a copy of your book underneath it, and then has really no great tools for using protractors that I can use on top of it. So I'm going to be making do, and it means that I'm going to have to pinch in and out on my screen a few times, and it will no doubt mean that we make some errors along the way. So I'm not going to re-record this a million times to, to get it just right. Um, but with that, let's take a look at a couple of our problems. Let's take a look at problem number one. Problem number one asks us to use a protractor to measure the angles and then record the measurements in degrees. Now, you'll notice here that I have included this protractor. Now, I have copied this off the web and it's a protractor that is um, a little bit transparent so that we should be able to see the angles um, through, uh, through the protractor. So it's a little bit like a plastic protractor. Um, but please bear in mind that this will be a little bit difficult. We're gonna go ahead and expand out our angles here a little bit and then I want to use my protractor which I'm going to spin a little bit around put my protractor as close as I can to where this is Let's see if I can line that up ah there we go all right so you can see what I've done here I've tried to line up the zero line of the protractor with uh, the bottom part of this angle the angle that starts here and goes up here and then I just kind of want to look my way up the arc and see it goes 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Looks like something like in the, in the neighborhood of 68 degrees or so for angle uh, A. So let me go ahead and write that in. This unfortunately may, um, may not do so well, but we'll, we'll give it a try. Um, we're going to say that this is about 68 degrees. I'm going to say it's estimated 68 degrees. Now I have a feeling when I go ahead and grab my protractor again, that the number is going to go with me. Oh, no, it doesn't. All right, well, let's see. I'm going to turn our protractor again and line it all up with the first line there. I think that's pretty good, actually. And then let's see. So this goes up from the zero angle here all the way 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, but not quite to 80. So I am thinking that we could call that a about maybe 78 degrees, and that would be again an estimate. Um, it's definitely not up all the way uh, to the 90 degree mark. That kind of an angle would go out here. And it's not even quite to the 80 degree mark. That's be, that would be a little bigger. So I think we have about a 78 degree angle there. So that's how we can use our protractor um, to measure those angles. Now your protractor may be a semicircular protractor, which is just the top half of this, which is fine. You can make two semicircles into a circle. The one that I found that was transparent happened to be a 360 degree protractor, so I'm just using that uh, to, to demonstrate here. Okay, let's take a look at one more problem. Let's take a look at number three, and we'll just do one of these two problems. And number three reads, use a protractor to measure each angle, extend the length of the segments as needed. When you extend these segments, does the angle measure stay the same? Explain how you know. So you can see again over here, I have brought in my trusty protractor, and I'm going to go ahead and expand that out. That's one of the only advantages I have of, of here. And I'm going to expand that out and lay that right on the line. Oops, you can see it's very hard to get it exactly right. It's actually much harder on an iPad than it is on your book at home. There, I think I have it laid just right so that you can see the zero line of the protractor and the AC line segment are exactly the same. And if you look around, it goes all the way up to 90, all the way up to 180, and just a little bit, bit past that. I can't exactly see the hash marks here, but you can see that... Uh, that it does not go very far into the next 10. So I think a good estimate would be that this is about 183 degrees. It's definitely more than 180, right? We definitely can see that 180 would be up here. And that, the B, the AB segment is a little bit below that. 
Um, but it's not much below that. So I think it's about 183 degrees. Now to the other part of the segment, um, does the ang when you extend the segments, does the angle stay the same? Well, that you know the question being asked here is just, well, let's say instead of going from A to B, it actually went out further, right? Or let's say from A to C, it actually went out further. Now, as long as we drew these lines perfectly straight, would that have any effect? I mean, could we go ahead and, uh, and take our protractor and make it bigger? Would that, would that have any effect? No, not really. I mean, really, no matter how big or small, how long or short those lines are, the angle that they describe is really the same. And so that angle, you know, from the beginning looked like about 183 degrees. And no matter how far out those line segments go, it's going to be 183 degrees. If those went all the way, you know, uh, to Europe for AC and to um, China for AB, uh, it would still be about 183 degrees. So I'm going to let you go ahead and try uh, part B as well as the rest of the homework for tonight. Uh, thanks for sticking with me here on a, a somewhat more difficult version of Mr. Kung Has Problems where I've had to use this sort of virtual protractor. I appreciate your patience and, uh, and your attention to the visual detail, and I'll see you again next time. Thanks. Bye.